Hello and welcome to Darkside Scenics. This Spitfire diorama was built as part of a Facebook competition. Here are the rules. There must be fencing on the diorama, a piston engine should be used, the base size is A4, at a minimum there must be grass patches and there needs to be some mud. The first job was to pick up a basic Spitfire kit, I got this online for just over £8. This particular kit doesn't include paint, tools or glue, so you need to make sure you have those before you start the build. I found these small clamps in Hobbycraft and they're really useful for holding the parts together when you're using the cement. I'm not going into too much detail with this Airfix kit as I don't have a great deal of experience with them. I used some slightly watered down acrylic paint to match the colours on the box as closely as possible and then added the transfers. With the Spitfire built I moved on to the base, this is just some packing material added to an A4 piece of plywood. The glue I used was Gorilla Wood Glue and it's just weighted down overnight to go off. To build up the land I'm using Sculptor Mould. Pour some in a bowl or a jug, add water and then mix. I'm adding the sculpt mould over the entire diorama and then I can look at shaping the details. The idea is for the Spitfire to run through a field, crash through a fence and then land in a reed bed. Before the sculpt mould dries completely, I'm just wetting my finger so I can make the land slightly smoother. For the base coat, I'm using a burnt umber acrylic and it's just watered down slightly. This is brushed over the entire model. When the brown acrylic paint is dry, I'm using matte Mod Podge over the entire model for the earth texture. This earth texture is a mixture of Woodland Scenics Fine Turf and Brown Grout. Watered down washing up liquid is sprayed over the top before adding some scenic cement to hold everything in place. Here I'm using WWS basing glue ready for the static grass. As the static grass I'm using is quite long, I thought I might get a better result with the Pro Grass box rather than the normal applicator. This is quite a messy job, but it's great fun. The next step was to add some 4mm grass, so I went back to using the applicator for that. This part will be a field with a track running through it, so I'm just adding the basing glue where I need it. This is a base layer of 2mm North European grass. While that's drying, I turn my attention to making the reeds for the reed bed. This is an old paintbrush from B&Q.
This is Woodland Scenic's Earth Fine Turf and it's mixed with a dark yellow flower hue. I'm adding some scenic cement into a bowl, then I dip the bristle in it before adding it to the powder. I did find that the scenic cement was too thin, so I mixed it with some scenic glue for a better hold. All of the reeds are left on a non-stick oven tray to dry. The reeds are all placed individually using scenic glue. This is a small area I started with. Moving back to the riverbed, I'm just cutting some twigs from the garden and then gluing them in place with scenic glue. Placing the reeds individually is obviously a very long job, and as the deadline was approaching, I tried gluing some bristles together to thicken out the reed bed. Some of the mix I used for the tips of the reeds was also used as a scatter. This is some dark earth scatter from Javis. This is a mixture of scenic cement and scenic glue and I'll be using this to add some detail to the riverbed. For the riverbed I'm using some fine ballast of different colours. And then a final sprinkling of the earth texture. To allow the Spitfire to sit correctly, I had to remove part of the propeller as if it came off in the crash. I used a generous amount of scenic glue on the Spitfire before fixing it in place. More scatter was used over the entire model to help to blend the colours. And then a quick spray of watered down washing up liquid followed by another spray of scenic cement. To prepare for the resin pour, I'm using masking tape at either end to create a dam. To make absolutely sure it doesn't leak, I'm also using some scenic glue to create a seal. I'll leave that to dry overnight so it means I can turn my attention to the fencing. All of the fencing will be made from cocktail sticks. These will be the posts. For the fencing rails I'm cutting down the centre of a cocktail stick. To give the posts and the rails a slightly more rustic look I'm carefully scraping each piece with a craft knife. A small hole is made for each post and the ruler helps to ensure the measurements are correct. I tapped in the posts to try and damage the tops and give the impression that they were hammered into the ground. For the final placement I just use a small amount of scenic glue to hold each post in place. The posts in the Spitfire's path will be split and damaged. Using the rails I made earlier, I'm just adding a small amount of scenic glue at either end before attaching them to the posts. This is some more of the earth texture which helps to create the crash site. And again, watered down washing up liquid followed with scenic cement.
This is Woodland Scenic's Fine Leaf Foliage in Olive Green, uh, glued down with Scenic Glue. A small amount of dark earth scatter and then some burnt grass is used around the bushes to blend them in. This is WWS Deep Cast Water. I go into more detail on a separate video on this, but it's basically two parts water to one part hardener. To get the murky effect I'm looking for, I rather carelessly add some brown acrylic paint. After a very thorough mixing, it is gently poured in around the model. I left this for 24 hours before peeling off the masking tape. There's a very slight lip at either end which is removed with a sharp craft knife. Some more of the burnt umber Vallejo paint is used to create a wash and this will be used to weather the fence. Where the earth has been churned up by the Spitfire, I'm using a slightly darker weathering powder to give that effect. A light earth weathering powder is added to the track. Some more of the rails and the posts are scattered around the area as if damaged in the crash. I wasn't entirely happy with the reed bed and I had a bit more time, so I created another tray of reeds to add to the area. At the time I finished the model, Storm Eunice was outside in full force, so I had to take the final photos in front of a computer screen. <laughs> 